Today I'd, li I'd like to share a new project I've recently been working on. Some of you may recognize this display from an earlier video on a CW recorder using a processor known as the Blue Pill. In that video I developed and programmed the processor using the Adreno IDE. The Blue Pill is based on the STM32F103C processor. And because it was something I was used to, the Adreno IDE worked well. Based on the success of using the F103 to simultaneously decode and digitally detect the audio tone, I wanted to go deeper into the world of digital signal processing. Turns out the blue pill has a cousin called the black pill. It uses an even more feature-rich processor, the STM32F411. And given the power packed into the 411, I think its price is quite reasonable. But be aware, like the display, there are a number of boards on the market called black pills, and they don't all come with the 411 chip. So before you pounce on what looks like a super low price, read the fine print. But I digress. The point of this video is not where or how to buy black pills, but suggest another programming tool that you might want to consider, the STM32 Cube IDE. Once I stuck my toe into the world of 32-bit processors, it was apparent that in the Adreno world, the power of this family was largely hidden. So in a quest to consider other options, I came across this super video and encourage anyone interested in DSP to check it out. I'll guarantee you'll learn a lot, particularly how to interact with the IDE, the STM family, and a way to pass digital audio in and out of a CPU. Now, back to the Cube IDE. First, it's free, and like the STM32 family, the IDE is feature rich. Its two most obvious components not found in the Adreno is the MX GUI, where you can select and set up pin and clocking scheme you want to for your project, and a debug module where you can select and clear breakpoints on the fly. Single step through your code and watch variables used in your sketch, plus many other features too numerous to do them justice here. But to my knowledge, what the IDE doesn't have are the many specialty breakout board libraries that are available on the Adreno. Since almost every project needs status indicators and input controls, I felt support for this touch display should have first priority. And the easiest way to get there would be to port the Adreno-based libraries over to the Cube IDE specifically the MCU Friend KBV library and the Touch KBV library. Now these two libraries are no different than most and they themselves depend on other libraries and often those are linked to yet others. So the project became an exercise in peeling away layers of an onion. Additionally, because the Adreno platform hosts a number of different CPUs, much of their code is devoted to sorting out exactly what hardware is in play. And to be clear, my objective was not to make the Cube IDE compatible with all the CPUs that, on the Adreno platform, the friend and touchscreen libraries work with, but just the 411 black pill. However, while not tested, I believe that maybe with a few small tweaks, this ported code can work with other members of the STM32 family. So for those who would like to explore the Cube IDE and also use this type of display, the files found in this project might help you get started. Now, that's the meat of this video, but if you have a moment, I would like to explain what's in the project and maybe a, a touch a bit on how the Cube works. Now to be clear, I see myself as a neophyte in this space, and it, this is not meant to be a step-by-step -step video of how to install the Cube IDE. There's plenty of those already out there. The goal here is to share how I navigate the space 
and use the files you'll find in this project. So let's start by looking at what I think of as the project tree view. So you can see at the top, I'm in the cubes default workspace, workspace 1.5.1. And I now have three projects in that folder. Black Pill AGC Soundboard, the one and the one we're focused on now, MCU Friends Display, and at the bottom my first project, Simple Blink. So drilling into the MCU Friends project, you see it now has a number of subfolders, most of which the Cube IDE created itself when I did a save the MX view or use the build project command or icon. Now I use the new folders option to create the libraries folder and then went on and used the same method to create three subfolders Adafruit GFX library, MCU friends, and touchscreen KBV much like the way you'd find these in the Adreno space. Now I'm not going to attempt to describe every file and folder here, but I, what I want you to notice is that the GFX folder is the most complex and hosts most of the lower level calls in this group. And in this group, there are three files I want you to be aware of. A totally new file called stm32f411def.h and the Adreno CPP and H files. These three do most of the porting and if you're having troubles getting the project to work with another board, they are where I would look first. I left a lot in the Adreno's files that is not used here, but if you need to bring something over from the Adreno world, it could come into play unless you decide whether to create a new implementation to the call or let the original Adreno code handle it. Now that's an overview of what's in the libraries folders. While we're talking about this new set of folders, I want to point out the IDE's project properties view. And specifically, there's a C slash C++ general entry. Expanding it, you'll see the Paths and Symbols entry, and expanding it, and in the Include tab, it exposes three more settings, GNU C, GNU C++, and Assembly. Today, we can ignore the Assembly entry, but the other two are important. First notice the C Code Paths are independent from the C++ Paths, so they each need to be maintained. Most of the entries are self-generated by the IDE, but I manually added the purple entries. These allow me to reference the header files include statements using just the file name and not having to also provide the path to the file. Now, let's drill down into the core source part of the project tree. Here notice that some entries are slashed and grayed out, while others are not. That's because earlier I selected the file and selected the Exclude from Resource checkbox. In this way, when you do a build project, you can control or see exactly what's going to be used to build the project. So effectively, going back to Adreno terminology, I have a project that contains five sketches. And the one that gets loaded onto the board in this case is the scope demo. Now there's another reason why you may want to adopt this method of source code control. When you use the MX view to set up or more importantly modify the CPU configuration, saving this new configuration will automatically generate a new main C file. If your sketch is also called main C, then much of your sketch's code can get destroyed. Doing it this way will sidestep that issue. Typically what I do is review the new main C file and find the parts that are relevant to the configuration change and copy that into the file I ultimately want to make my want to be my sketch. Well that's it for now. Hope you found this helpful and good luck with your next project.